Now that we have gone through the sternum, ribs, and costal cartilages, next up in our list are the joints of the thoracic cage. Well, there are numerous joints that link the various parts of the thoracic cage and may either limit or permit the movement depending on the specific joint. First up is the, the manubriosternal joint. You can even guess from its name that it is a cartilaginous joint between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. It is in fact a symphysis joint, which is a joint in which the bone ends are covered with two layers of hyaline cartilage, which are themselves joined by fibrocartilage. At the manubriosternal joint, only a small amount of angular movement is possible during respiration. Well, the manubriosternal joint usually ossifies after the age of 30 years. Next up is the cyphosternal joint. Again, the name is suggesting that it is a cartilaginous joint between the cyphoid process and the body of the sternum. It is also a symphysis. Well, the cyphoid process usually fuses with the body of the sternum during middle age. Now, the sternocostal joint. Sterno is for sternum and costal from the costal cartilage. So, it's the joint between the sternum and the costal cartilage. Well, shown here is the first sternocostal joint. The first costal cartilages articulate with the manubrium through this primary cartilaginous joint, which is in fact a joint in which the two bones are directly joined by a single layer of hyaline cartilage, it does not permit a movement. While the second to seventh costal cartilages form synovial joints with the sternum, you are quite familiar with the synovial joints. They include a cavity containing synovial fluid and are lined by the synovial membrane Third to seventh costal cartilages have a single synovial joint, except for the second, which is double. Now, the ribs and costal cartilages form costochondral joints between them, which are the primary cartilaginous joints. No movement is possible here. Now, interchondral joints. Inter means between, and chondral refers to the cartilage. So, Interchondral joints are the one formed between the costal cartilages of the 8th, 9th, and 10th ribs. These are in fact the small synovial joints. Now, the next joints I am going to mention here involves the vertebra. First one here is costovertebral joints. Well, these joints comprise two synovial joints formed by the articulations of the demiphysites on the head of each rib, with the bodies of its corresponding vertebra together with that of the vertebra above. Here, the first and 10th to 12th ribs have a single synovial joint with their corresponding vertebral bodies. Now, lastly, we have the cost of transverse joints. Well, these are synovial joints formed by the articulations between the facets on the rib tubercle and the transverse process of its corresponding vertebra. Well, that was about the joints of the thoracic cage that include the manubriosternal joint, cyphosternal joint, sternocostal joint, costochondral joint, interchondral joint, costotransverse joint, and costovertebral joint. So, now is the time to head on the next section about the thoracic vertebrae and the openings into the thorax. It is in fact, the last part of this video. So, bear with me. Explore our extensive library of over 1800 video lectures to learn about a wide range of topics. Only on scadia.com.